Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and I'm recording this early in the week because my plans are kind of changing, uh, so it's uh, still March, the end of March, um, but I have my procedure now has been moved up, and so I figured I would try to get a couple videos in before the weekend, and since now I can't go see Morbius over the weekend because I'll be on bed rest, I figured I would do something that's kind of Morbius related, but also uh, just a great issue of Spider-Man that is really near and dear to my heart. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this kind of this new setup and this new uh, format I'm going to try for this video. And, uh, and I'd love to hear your comments down below. So hopefully if you've read this comic, but if you haven't read Spectacular Spider-Man number 14 by Paul Jenkins and art by Paolo Rivera, you know, please, you know, maybe go away now and then come back after because I really don't want to spoil this book for you. It's very heartfelt. It's a very um, personal story, I think. I don't know if Paul Jenkins or... Paolo know anyone or have family members or friends that have a cerebral palsy, but it's just um, a really touching and moving issue. So uh, before I completely talk about it and, and ruin it for you and ruin your experience of it, I'd rather you go get the experience yourself. So you can pick up the comic book on Amazon or Comixology, digital if you'd like, uh, for $1.99, or you can buy the trade paperback called Spider-Man or Spectacular Spider-Man, and I think it's volume three or four. And it's called Here There Be Monsters. So that's it for my spoiler warning. And uh, now we'll jump into the actual discussion. There are a couple Spider-Man issues that when I'm feeling really down, um, I actually will read. Uh, there's not a lot of other superheroes out there that have comic books, uh, single issue stories even, that resonate with me as much as there are um, for Spider-Man. Like Spider-Man just has, there's like at least five or six that I can think of that I always go to when things get really, really bad and I just need some form of escape or, you know, just to see someone who might have it worse, even if it's a fictional character. Um, I can always count on Spider-Man for that. Uh, you know, he's been through a lot. He's been through the ringer. It, it, it's, um, it's not an easy life being a superhero. And especially when you started out as a teenager and then growing into an adult, uh, you know, as Spider-Man has, he's been through a lot uh, for sure. And he's got interesting perspectives on things and he's one of those guys that um you know fails a lot and every with every success there's a failure in some way and i think that's very relatable so this issue is really neat because it's not told through the eyes of spider-man um it's told through the eyes of a kid named joey beal who is a uh, cere has cerebral palsy he's a uh, uh, restricted to a wheelchair and he lives in new york obviously and his he has a, a dad who takes care of him and an older sister. And he narrates at the beginning of the story that uh, his mom died during childbirth and there was some kind of shortage of oxygen. So she died and he ended up with the conditions that he has. And so, uh, so he you know, even says, I think my dad used to blame me for killing my mom, but I think at some point he forgave me and just realized, okay, I gotta, I'm gonna have to take care of, of my son in, in ways where they have to, you know, him and his sister have to or his dad and his sister have to bathe him and they have to feed him. And, uh, you know, sometimes he, he can't control his body. So he's having spasms when they're trying to feed him. So he can be, he can cause frustration, or at least through his eyes, he's thinking he's, he's causing a lot of frustration. And he feels in some way like he's a little bit of a burden um, and that he's preventing, you know, um, happiness on some level. And, uh, and it's just, it really, you know, you can feel the emotion in this. Paul Jenkins is is just an amazing writer in general, and he's an amazing Spider-Man writer. And in fact, one of my other favorite issues that he did was um, he was picking up the book after I think Howard Mackey was leaving the Spider-Man books um, in the early 2000s. And uh, you know, basically Paul Jenkins was like, where do I go with this story? Like, you know, Mary Jane's missing. There's like all these things going on in Peter's life that are horrible. Like, what do I do? Like I, you know, kind of all the writers before me kind of just left him in a bad spot. And and there's this great issue of Spider-Man that Paul Jenkins wrote where he's like, all right, well, let's just have Peter deal with it. And so Peter goes to a cemetery and talks to Uncle Ben about, you know, here's all the bad things happening in my life. And he's like, can you give me a sign that things are going to get better? And then as he says that, uh, like a street cleaning truck or something drives by and runs through a puddle and the mud water like pours onto Peter, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and then he just starts laughing because it's just it, that's. That's sometimes that's reality where you, you want things to get better and they don't, you know, they just, they can't. And so they just get a little worse and you kind of have to laugh at that point or you'll go crazy, I think. And so that issue I've always loved. So Paul Jenkins coming back and writing another single issue personal story is just, um, it's, it's just perfect. He's such a good writer. And so Joey 
asks, you know, his family usually brings him up to the roof. So his sister works a full-time job. His dad works a full-time job. So they kind of trade shifts on keeping an eye on Joey. But there is this point in the day where for like an hour or two, they don't, they, you know, they can't do anything with him. Like no one's there to watch him. So they usually bring him up to the roof or they leave him in the apartment, whichever one he kind of reacts to, like whichever decision. But he, at least in his inner monologue, because he's narrating the book, um, there's not a ton of dialogue in this issue. And, uh, you know, so he goes up to the roof and just kind of likes to look out at the city. And uh, and then one night while he's up there, he sees Spider-Man swinging by and Spider-Man's looking for something and he and so or someone. And he's like, well, what's he looking for? What's going on? There's this strange electricity about him that I can sense. You know, I can sense his energy in a way. And there's something about him, but I can't pinpoint what it is. And he goes, but he's looking for something or someone. So who is it? And then across the street, you actually see Morbius, the living vampire, um, in a warehouse, uh, you know, peeking out the window, looking at uh, Spider-Man swing by, and then looks over and sees Joey, you know, in his wheelchair, and they make eye contact. And uh, and then so Joey's like trying to say Spider-Man, or you know, and his you know his dad comes up to get him and say, hey, I'm I'm home from my work shift. I'm ready to bring you back downstairs. You know, what were you doing up here, kiddo? Like they always they he says his family tries to like have conversations with him and then they kind of answer for him in a way. Um, and so, uh, so he says, so his dad was like, well, you know, what were you doing up here? And he's trying to point and, you know, and trying to get people's attention and he can't say, you know, what, what's he, what he's seeing and he can't, uh, direct Spider-Man or anything to Morbius. So he gets brought back downstairs and for like a night or two, he's, um, you know, inside the apartment and Morbius is kind of peeking in on him and, uh, you know, kind of, spying on him and stuff and then one night again the, you know his sister has to go to work and there's that little barrier of like what are we going to do with him for like two hours and he points at the roof and they're and you know sister's like okay i'll bring you up there and dad will get you when when, when he gets home and so he bring you know she brings him upstairs and leaves him on the roof and uh, and then he sees you know morbius and morbius is kind of waiting for him and he's like hey you know i know who you are joey um and you're restricted to this chair you know i know what it's like to have a sickness and and want to you know be cured of it and get and get out and be free and he's like and that's what i am now as a living vampire so maybe i can help you i can you know bite you and turn you and you won't be restricted to this life anymore and Joey's kind of panicking because, you know, it's scary. It's a vampire like leaning in to bite you. And even though he's saying all these things that, you know, might entice you, um, you know, he it is like wrong in a way, you know, to him. He's just like, no, I don't want to be a vampire. I don't want to to, you know, leave my family or, or, or have to or hurt them to, you know, want to feed or whatever. But as Morbius is leaning in to bite him, Spider-Man shows up and knocks Morbius down. And then they get in this big fight and Joey's watching it and uh and you kind of see it all from joey's perspective so they're like dipping in and out of sight and stuff around the building and then finally he sees morbius fall and then spider-man kind of with him but then spider-man swings back up and lands on the roof with joey and he says uh, hey man don't worry about morbius i kicked his butt you know he's not going to be coming back here don't worry um but he said uh you know so you know but you, he can't help himself you know he's morbius he he was a great doctor and then he mutates sometimes and he loses himself. And so, you know, we have to kind of be patient with him. You know, he, he can't control who he is. He can't control sometimes what he does. And he's like, he's kind of stuck, you know? And then he kind of looks at Joey, realizing Joey is in a wheelchair uh, with, you know, with his condition. And he's like, I guess you can relate, huh? And then he sits down next to him. He goes, I guess we both can relate. And that's when Joey kind of looks at Spider-Man and goes, you know, I understand what that electricity is now. It's it's not electricity. It's it's not a positive emotion or energy that's surrounding Spider-Man. Although he fakes it to feel like it's positive, but it's actually sadness. And Joey's like, I think he's sadder than I am. And I think his, in some way, somehow, he he's sadder about his existence than I am of mine. And I feel sorry for Spider-Man. And so Spider-Man, you know, gets up you know, makes a couple quick jokes, tells Joey to stay out of trouble. And Joey's like, oh man, dad jokes. <laughs> you know, he's kind of like, wow, this guy's kind of lame uh, in a way. But then Spider-Man takes his mask off and shows Joey his real face. And Joey's like, what is, what's this, what's he doing? It's the, what a weird thing to do and show me. Um, but then Joey kind of understands and he's like, oh, he's, he's given me something. Um, you know, like my family does, like they just want me to be okay. 
and Spider-Man just wants me to be okay. And so he kind of like a, appreciates that moment. He's like, you know, I, I don't even know if I could describe what he looked like, you know, anymore because, you know, the way this is told is like it's happened in the past. And he's like, I don't even know if I could describe what he looks like. I just know he was sad. And uh, his his file his smile was convincing, but it was it was a fake smile. He he was trying to make me feel like everything's gonna be okay. And then he put his mask back on and swings away. And then at that point, Joey's dad comes up to the roof and grabs him and brings him back downstairs um, and kind of ends the book there. And it's it's really good. I think there's a lot of emotion in it, uh, a lot of images with no words. Um, but the, the art by Paolo Rivera is so striking and so beautiful that you just understand the emotion that is supposed to be there. And sometimes, Paul Jenkins, there's a couple of moments where I feel like it's a little over-explained of like when Joey's watching the battle, he's describing them as like a, a German opera, you know, fighting in the sky or whatever. And it's like, ah, it's some of that I don't think you need so much. You know, the editor in me is like coming out. But at the same time, like the book is just really solid. And it's an interesting Morbius story because it's once again, it's him kind of as a villain, but he he thinks he's doing the right thing by offering to bite Joey and, and get him out of the wheelchair. So there's like a, you know, it's it's still kind of true to Morbius, although he's kind of just portrayed mostly as a vampire monster in this one, but it's still done really, really well. And I feel like still kind of in keeping a little bit with the character on some level, c considering how the character has pendulum swung a lot throughout the years as a villain, an anti-hero, a hero, like he's kind of gone back and forth a lot. So it, it still makes sense in the realm of things. And, you know, recently we did a live stream where we talked about some of those other Morbius stories. So if you want to check that out, I'll put a link to that down below. And also, like I said, Spectacular Spider-Man number 14 by Paul Jenkins and Paolo Rivera. It's from the 2003 to 2005 series of Spectacular Spider-Man. So if you're looking for it on Comixology, those are the years next to the, the title that you'll be looking for, 2003 to 2005. And, uh, and then you can also find it in a trade paperback called Spectacular Spider-Man, Here There Be Monsters. But it's just this really cool one-off story that I think really works. It has some cool moments at the beginning where, you know, um, a couple of, uh, I think, um, ladies of the night or escorts or whatever, like, are talking to do, you know, someone's, like, questioning people about who Spider-Man is and what he means to the city. And that kind of, that's how the book starts off. So you see J. Jonah Jameson, like, saying, oh, he's a menace. And then you have these two ladies, you know, who work the corner and they're like, oh yeah, he, he swung by and he said something really sweet to us, you know, asked if we were supermodels or something, you know, and uh, it's just cool because you kind of get a sense of how the neighborhood feels about their friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. And Spider-Man is just kind of this guy who goes around and just says nice and flattering things to people sometimes. And um, it kind of paints Peter in a light that I really appreciate, uh, you know, as someone who tries to be positive to people when I see them and, and tries to you know, I had someone at work recently say, oh, you, you write the nicest emails, you know, like you're, they're always positive and uplifting and, uh, and encouraging and stuff. And, uh, yeah, it's, I get it from, from books like this and I get it from Peter Parker, you know, so, uh, it's a, it's a good trait to pick up. Yeah, for sure. And I'm sure my, I think my grandfather was like that too, a lot, um, you know, could talk to anybody kind of guy. So, uh, yeah. So anyway, this issue is amazing. And, and I wanted to record this before I went in for my procedure, um, so that it was like fresh in my mind and I can really talk about it. And so you could really see how connected I am with this story and how much I really loved it. And, and I can only encourage you to go check it out yourself. Um, hopefully you didn't watch this and me spoil everything, but if you did, please, it's worth the $2. If you're going to buy it digitally, uh, just go do it and read it for yourself. There's a couple things I, I skipped out on too. And it's just, it's really good. It's a really good standalone Spider-Man story. And, um, It'll tug at your heart, that's for sure. It definitely tugs at mine every time I read it, um, but in a good way, in, a, in an uplifting and positive way, uh, because, you know, Spider-Man just wants us all to be okay. And uh, and so, yeah, that message is very clear in the issue. So let me know what you think if you've read this book yourself. Um, if you have any thoughts or comments, let me know down below. And as always, we'll continue our conversation down there. Thank you so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.